I offer my congratulations to the 2022 class of the Peabody Conservatory who represent our future, a future that I know is in really, really good hands. And applause to your teachers who over the course of your studies have inspired you, encouraged imaginative thinking, maybe made you sweat, fostered your curiosity, and maybe made you shake in your shoes, and, uh, and motivated you to go deep into your artistry. It's a great honor to receive the George Peabody Medal and to witness this milestone moment in your lives. Today marks a grand finale, but it's also your overture and all the unknowns that lie ahead, along with the opportunity to become whoever you choose to be, to have a whoever you choose to be. I know you're all eager to go out and celebrate, <laughs> but I want to take just a few minutes and offer up some things to think about that I hope will inspire you as you venture forth out into the world, continue to master your chosen paths, and please, Save our planet, please. <laughs> However, first of all, I want you to know how hard it is for me to keep up with technology. Now, <laughs> I'm a bona fide geek, you know. I signed that contract a long time ago. I'm actually known among my friends as the gadget guy, right? <laughs> and as you may know, I don't know, some of you may know, some, so much of my music has been tech-driven, influenced by these gadgets. However, it seems like every week there's some new piece of ultra-modern equipment that I have to check out. And honestly, it's a challenge to figure out all the ins and outs, because they're all new. I think most of you graduates were born in the early 2000s, so I'm not sure you can imagine how unbelievably fast the speed of change is today compared to life in the 20th century. Today, thanks to technology, there's a musical jet stream encircling our globe and there are all kinds of innovative ways to make music. And with the rise of AI, VR, and AR, the listening experience is continuing to develop by merging seamlessly with the visual experience. Now, this is exciting for all of us. So knowing that the future is bright for innovation and instead of trying to do what I did 50 years ago, I'm working with young people from various decades to help me make the music I want to create now because I need their input. I need your input. I don't want to be stuck in the past. I want to be in the present. But I look forward to the future even during these trying times. So, to help me on my journey, I often have to go to YouTube <laughs> in order to understand my new gadgets because I have to learn how and why they work. And along, along the way, I notice how many young people, teens, 20, 30-year-olds, are offering offering up these valuable videos. They're the ones that are making the, the videos on YouTube. So 
Before I go any further, it's important for me to tell you that I'm learning from you and your generation. And I want you to know how grateful and thankful I am for your expertise. I saw somebody over there who's kind of my age. They didn't applaud, so. <laughs> <laughs> but I also have a responsibility to share some of what I've learned way before you were born. It's my mission in life to hand the baton to you. We artists come up with countless ideas that we believe have no bearing on where we are on our musical journey or where we think we want to go. But I can tell you from experience that you never know when you'll need to bring this information back into your life. Sometimes in a new form. And occasionally, these little snippets that we accumulate contribute profoundly to a life-altering idea or project. For example, in 1997, I got together with my best friend, the amazing saxophonist and composer, Wayne Shorter. Yes, sir. <laughs> right? We got together to make a record called One Plus One. You know what the original title of that album was? It was Cut and Paste. <laughs> and and you'll, you'll see why. Wayne and I came up with the cool idea to compose one new piece from some old ideas that were either unfinished or for some reason had been set aside. So I hunted around my house and my studio, and Wayne did the same thing. And we both found so many interesting, usable ideas that we were able to transform and channel them into two recordings from that album called The Visitor From Nowhere and The Visitor From Somewhere. I don't know if you know anything about Wayne. Maybe some of you do. But that sounds like Wayne speak, right? So this exercise taught me a good lesson. Originally, these ideas might have remained scattered around our studios or perhaps even been headed for the trash. But we realized that with time, we were able to envision and hear things with new ears. So please don't be quick to discard any creative notions because it may very well have re relevance in the future. Everything has meaning, even the trash. This also applies to your life. The regrets, the suffering, the bad reviews, failures, disappointing performances, all of them are imbued with meaning. Never ever allow any of this to stop you because it's the journey that matters. And if you stumble along the way, please never forget that failure is a blessing. It's our friend. And in my opinion, one of the very best ways to learn. What pitch is that? <laughs> I can't say this enough. You can turn poison into medicine. Thank you, Apple. <laughs> or, or Google. Or... Anyway, so uh, Nietzsche so eloquently said, quote, I tell you, one must have chaos in oneself to give birth to a dancing star. Here's another way to think about it. Untold numbers of people have given us speeches saying, quote, if I hadn't gone through this 20, 30 odd years ago, 
I wouldn't be where I am today. Which means learning from our mistakes and learning in general is one of life's greatest gifts. And I hope, like me, you'll be open to the never-ending pleasure of acquiring knowledge. If you use it wisely, it's one important key to living your best life. The big thing, though, is wisdom. So, you just heard me use the phrase turning poison into medicine a few moments ago. And I'd like to tell you its origin. And then I'll share a bit more of this wisdom. For the past 50 years, it's a half a century, I've been a member of the most diverse Buddhist community in the world. It's called SGI, or Circle Gakkai International. The practice of SGI members is primarily based on the Lotus Sutra. It's Nichiren Buddhism. One of the things it teaches is that each person has within the courage, wisdom, and the compassion to face and surmount any of life's challenges. And that's where I was introduced to the concept of turning poison into medicine. SGI President Daisaku Ikeda beautifully said, we can transform even the greatest evil into the greatest good. One can actually gain from an experience that once seemed so poisonous. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? But it's, it's true. Every once in a while, I get to be a, a guest leader at our SGI meetings, and I'll bring up an experience from my past relating to our studies that I hope the group may find useful. I explain what I've gone through and how this aspect of my Buddhist faith has become a pillar of my existence. For example, this afternoon, I'm wearing many hats. Professor, mentor, composer, musician, band leader, husband, father, son, neighbor, American, African American, and world citizen. And of the utmost importance to me is that which connects them all. I'm a human being. What I do is play music. What I am is a human being, just like everybody else. I function as a musician, but first I'm a human being. Identifying myself and looking at myself as only an artist kind of puts me in a box. But when I saw myself as a human being, the walls of the box came tumbling down. And like magic, there unfolded infinite possibilities I was able to pour into my art as well as all the other facets of my life. I, I wasn't on the path to realizing this, but one day I had this profound awakening when I was chanting that changed absolutely everything. That's when it happened. It turned my world upside down and sideways. It sounds basic, but there's more to this. We're all different from everybody else. But yet, we're no different from every other human being. That sounds like a paradox, doesn't it? We all have our own personal missions. Everybody has a purpose that only they can fulfill. And this is all, this is important. We're all connected and it's essential that we remain connected because we need each other to succeed.
Nobody is replaceable. I was just thinking about those 19 children that were killed. They're not replaceable. There's absolutely no difference between us and people living halfway across the world in perilous conditions. We're all equal, and at the same time, we're all unique. And we bring our best to the table of life for the future of humanity. In our SGI meetings, we've recently been discussing the principle of cherry, plum, peach, and damson. A cherry tree will never be a peach tree, nor does it need to be. It has the innate capacity to become itself by growing and bearing fruit. Each tree is necessary, and they don't need to merge into one because they are perfect just as they are, just like you. There's a difference between who you are and staying as you are which I hope you'll think about because I know you want to grow and flourish and develop like the lotus flower. Ponder your purpose in life and make every effort to challenge yourself because right now you're at the starting point for a more wonderful, well-rounded you in the future. Please never forget that your individuality is your own unique weapon for making the most of your life. Yes, you'll have to fight against your negative self. Time and time again, we all have our negative self and our positive self. And we have to fight against the forces that keep you from advancing. But know that you're waging a battle against stagnation. And, my friends, please remember, these are the only kinds of fights, battles, and weapons you and the rest of the world should have at the ready. Now, there's, uh, here's one more story before I wrap things up and you'll be on your way to freedom. <laughs> Back in the late 1960s, I put together a six-piece avant-garde jazz band called Mwandishi. But after a few years of playing this kind of untethered music floating out in space, I began listening to Sly Stone and lots of other fun funky music, James Brown. And, and I knew I wanted to play something more of the earth from the soil. So, I put a different band together, and we made a record called Headhunters. In the process of creating that album, I realized I, I knew the jazz critics would not be happy with it because I was sure I'd be lucky to get between two, two and a half out of five stars, <laughs> if I get any at all. However, the general public loved it. And, and it sold very well. So, 25 years later, when one of the critics who panned my record caught up with me, he apologized for his scathing review. He said he was wrong. And I knew that sticking to my convictions about what I wanted to create was the way to go. And I didn't let the jazz community tell me what to do. When I took the Headhunters band to Europe, the first concert we played was in the Philharmonie in Berlin. You know what the audience did? They threw tomatoes. They whistled real loud. You know, they threw eggs and they booed. We just kept right on playing. But you know, 
They did that because our music wasn't what they expected to hear from me. So let's fast forward one year later, same hall, same tunes, same set list, and the audience was dancing in the aisles. Your dream only needs to make sense to one person on the planet. That person is you. So believe in yourself. Find your own creative spirit and never, ever give up. In closing, I welcome you with open arms to the next chapter of your lives. Your story continues and the plot thickens. It's your turn to shake up the earth and blaze new trails. Use your exceptional talents and your incredibly fertile imaginations to promote peace, make new friends, communicate, find strength in working together, cross musical and artistic genres, and create your masterpieces. However, and this is critical, all of you have an enormous responsibility to resolve the ecological catastrophe facing world citizens. The world has made some progress in climate change, but we still have a long way to go and almost no time to act. So please unite and be the stewards of this planet we all call home. Work together as a family, a community, a nation, and a planet. Because this is the only place we have. And there's nowhere else to go. In our ever speedier connected world, many critical questions are at long last being addressed. Finally, George Floyd, Me Too, Black Lives Matter, hate crimes against Asians, anti-Semitism rearing its ugly head again, poverty, inequality, gender equality, climate change, immigration, genocide now in Ukraine, authoritarianism, to name a handful. All of these issues and more are coming together. And I have faith that you are the generation that is equipped to provide the answers we so desperately need. Again, congratulations to the musicians and to the very first class to earn a BFA in dance and music for new media. Every one of you deserve extra praise for continuing to study, practice, and communicate during this pandemic. From your virtual classrooms to being back in these hallowed halls, you did it with grace and passion. And we're all so very proud of you. It's an honor and a privilege to be here with you today.